today we have a 2014 Porsche Panamera SE Hybrid. It has the V6 supercharged engine. It's mated with a hybrid uh, motor right immediately behind that, and it has the high voltage battery. So we have a PO491 and a PO492 code, which is low flow on the secondary air. So secondary air, low flow bank one, and low flow bank two. So the car came in, we did our cursory checks on it. Uh, the pump, we could not command on. The pump was burned out. The 40 amp fuse uh, that controls the pump, that was popped. So we put a pump in it and we put a fuse in it. Still gave us a PO491 and a 492. And what we found also, which was interesting, is the pump would only run for three seconds. It actually run, we actually timed it with an oscilloscope. We're gonna do lots of, of oscilloscope stuff today. Uh, it would run for 3.4 seconds, exactly. And it would draw a lot of current. On this screen, our A and B is the B plus and the negative going to the secondary air pump. The C circuit, which is green, is an amp clamp around the negative uh, secondary air pump, the negative cable. And our D is the map uh, for this gold line right here. Uh, that is the map sensor that is inside the secondary air pipe that is located underneath the throttle body. Um, and it just looks like a little miniature map sensor. So anyways, B plus and our negative were looking very good throughout this. What we did notice if we look right over here uh, on this green line, uh, which is also displayed right here, uh, we're drawing 34 amps kind of a, as an average. If I go to the top line right here, it's 38 amps. If I go down to the bottom, it's 30 amps. Uh, so it's drawing just kind of like an average of about 35 amps uh, while this circuit is on. Now remember I said this, this entire circuit is fused on a 40 amp circuit. So I thought 35 amps was too much. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to switch screens and we are going to disconnect the hose and we're going to see if our amp draw goes up or down. Okay, so right here, uh, same screen, we've got our B plus, minus. Uh, we're going to bring our C channel down and we are going to watch and see. Uh, so our secondary air pump hose is disconnected from right here. So it comes from the pump down here, goes in and underneath the engine that way. So right here we just disconnected it and we ran the same test. And what we found is that we dropped the current by an average of about 25%. Uh, roughly, so we're at 24 amps of current. Uh, the, the top of that mark is 28. The bottom of that mark is 17.9. So 20, our, our middle line average is somewhere right around 23-ish, uh, 23 amps of current. So that's a considerable amount uh, when that hose is disconnected. So at this point, we suspected that there was blockage. Before we we're going to go after uh, plug cylinder heads. We disconnected the secondary air pump. We disconnected it, then we plugged it off. Okay, we didn't allow any air to pass. We felt the pump turn on, and this is what we got. Um, so our amperage is a high of about 37, a low of about 29, and our average, this is this, uh, I'm looking at the second spot of the green area. This is probably, maybe we were trying to deadhead it right here, then we got it deadheaded. At deadheaded, it was 33 amps. Now, I remember in, the, in the, the first one, the car, it was running at the same amperage. So at this point, we knew that we had a blockage. The first test, we ran the pump and we, we saw that it was about 35 amps uh, draw. Then when we disconnected the secondary air, it went down to 25 amps draw. We thought that there was some blockage. So then what we did is we deadheaded the pump. We are going into this engine and we're gonna figure out what is blocking it. So what we have here is the V6 supercharged engine. Uh, it, as far as I can tell, it's the same engine like in an Audi Q7, uh, any of the V6 supercharged engines. What we've figured out through lots of research is that the cylinder head is plugged now we have to figure out how we're going to unplug it. Are we taking the heads off? Are we leaving the heads on? Are we doing it through the exhaust manifold? However we're doing it. Uh, what we learned through some research is that 
The port runs from the back, so the secondary air valve on each cylinder head is on the back of the engine. Um, you can see how they manufactured it. They put like a plug, very similar to a freeze plug, way down in there. So if you can see that plug right down in there, that's the other end of the secondary air port. Immediately behind that to the back of the head, that's where the secondary air valve puts its air in. What they used, which was to our advantage, they machined a bore through each exhaust manifold area right into the exhaust port. So I'm gonna show you that in a second. So what effectively plugs off that bore to the outside is the exhaust manifold. So the manifold plugs off each individual secondary air port going into each cylinder. So let's get a better view of the secondary air port and the exhaust manifold. If you're used to how the Europeans do it, kind of sort of similar to something like how BMW does it, this is a BMW cylinder head, uh, and then this is a jig that a machine shop makes, and you actually drill through the cylinder head to access the secondary air port. But on this engine, the way they designed it is they already drilled the cylinder head for you because it's part of the manufacturing process. They already bored through. And what they did to use as a plug is they used the exhaust manifold gasket. So you can see uh, where these little dots are. The, that is the secondary air port into each exhaust port. And so all you have to do is remove the exhaust manifold and then this is just wide open and then you drill right through it, it gets right into the exhaust port, and that's it, it's done. Both exhaust manifolds were removed. Um, you can see right here as well, uh, you can see like that little tiny circle dot right there, that's where the secondary air port is. So we just took the exhaust manifolds off, and then with a 90 degree angle drill bit, we drilled out each port. Okay, so you can see uh, the exhaust manifold uh, threads are right here, so you see three threaded holes per exhaust port. Right here, this hole right here is our secondary air. So each cylinder has one of these. So we just got a 90 degree drill, we put it in there, we drilled all the way through, and there was definitely blockage. Absolutely, without question, every single cylinder had blockage, major blockage. Uh, right over through here, this is the secondary air port where the valve gets bolted onto right into there. So the secondary air valve gets bolted right into there. The air gets fed through that bore line and then each cylinder picks up secondary air through this bore line that's perpendicular to this one and it goes straight into the back of each exhaust valve on the engine. So we opened each one of those up. Uh, that is a direct line right into the back of the exhaust valve. So you have to be really careful. Some of the exhaust valves are open when you do this. You can, you can spin the engine around and make sure that it's closed to be on the safe side. Uh, we also removed all the spark plugs when we were done drilling. And then we vacuum, we vacuum sucked out any debris, any carbon deposit that could have gone into the cylinder because we don't want to damage the cylinder once we start the engine back up. Did we fix our PO 491 and 492 code? We are going to find out and I'm gonna give you some good data with an oscilloscope. We're gonna put everything back together, get all the cylinders cleaned out, get the car running, get the secondary air operational again, and we are going to see what the amp draw is of the secondary air pump with all those ports open. The car's back together. It had too high of an amp draw coming out of the secondary air pump when everything was acting normal. Uh, it had a nice low 25 amp draw when we disconnected the pipe. So we've got the car back together. So we've got our inductive clamp and we are gonna monitor what our amperage draw is on the ground cable. Go ahead and fire it off, Alex. Nice, okay. The main thing we're watching right now is that the pump is running Longer than 3.4 seconds, that's a huge win. Uh, so I just zoomed into this capture, and you can see here our highest peak lines are at 36 amps. Those are few and far between. Um, our average, you know, deep blue line here, we're at around 28 amps. Uh, so that is much lower than what our 
uh, deadheaded pump was. Uh, it's a tiny bit higher than when we disconnected it, but we kind of expect that because we're running it through uh, orifices that are smaller than the size of the pipe, right? So they're causing a restriction all right there. But I think the lowest we got from an average was about 25 amps. So right now, this 28 and a half amp number is really good. I like this as a fix. Now we can kind of judge also when does something get partially clogged. Right now they're, full, they're fully cleaned out. So this is as clean as it's gonna get. When are they partially clogged? When this number goes to 30 or 32 amps? Uh, I, I, at 35 amps, it would only run for 3.4 seconds and then turn off because it didn't want to melt things. Uh, the car already came in with a popped fuse. This car is fixed. We're going to verify that it's fixed after running the secondary air monitor. We're going to verify that we don't have any uh, low flow codes on bank one and bank two. But we've already verified that our pump runs for more than three and a half seconds. This car is good to go.